everyone and welcome again to the Never X Ever channel. In this video, I'll be introducing to you an online application that allows you to calculate the levelized cost of electricity and the storage of your project. I developed this application a few months ago and I'm excited to finally present it to you. So the application basically helps you to quickly access the economic viability of your project without the need of using any Excel or old software. It's going to save you lots of time because you just have to plug in the numbers and I'm going to get the, the results straight away. So I'll be walking you through all the steps and information each input, such as the project economics, the generation, the capex and the opex. The, the tool for now is quite simple, but there's a lot of extra functionality that I can plan to add in the future. So stay tuned. Let's get started. Follow me along as I guide you through the steps and let's see how it works. So, as soon as you land in the page, you're going to have already uh, a calculation that is already plugged in the, in, the, in the application for you, okay? So, in the left side here, what you have is a, is a sidebar with all the uh, data that you have to input, okay? So, the data entry is divided in four different uh, categories, okay? So, we have the project economics and schedules, we have the generation, we have the capex, and we have the opex. And of course, in the center frame, what we have here is basically the results, okay? So we have the, the main um, calculations in here, we have some graphics in here, and as you scroll down, you can see more breakdowns of the LCOE, uh, including a Sankey diagram where you can see all the energy flows, okay? So you can see where the energy is being generated and where is it going to. And finally, what we have here is just a table with all the calculations for you. Okay, so if you've been following through the videos of my previous video on YouTube, you're going to see that the results that I'm going to have here is the same ones that we had in the previous uh, uh, videos, okay? And the structure is basically the same, but it, here you just can calculate things much, much quickly, okay? So let's going to go through and let's going to change the numbers here and you can, say, you can see how it works, okay? So in the first section here, what we have is the project economics and schedules, okay? So basically what we have to do here, we have to set a date to start your project, okay? So let's say we can start the date, let's say June 1st, okay? So you always try to put like either the first quarter or the first day of the year, okay? So let's put 1st of June here, okay, we select. Then you can set here the total construction length in quarters, okay? So basically here is gonna be like, we're gonna have four quarters, uh, of near, uh, so basically one year, okay, so that's usually what I, I have in here. Then I'm going to put here the total length of operations, okay, so let's going to change it for 25 years, okay, we're going to, sorry, let's going to assess for 20 years, okay, our project. We're going to add here then the discount rate, okay, so let's going to change here for, uh, it's going to change here for 5%, okay, so it's a percent per year. And then let's gonna do it uh, the period length, okay? So basically, mean here, so for every operation year that you're gonna have, how long is the period, okay? So we have some presets in here, so you can have each operation here uh, by yearly, by quarterly, by monthly, okay? So I'm gonna put here by by quarterly, okay? So this is the first section of the of the application. So this is all the information you need for the project economics and schedules, okay? So if you can see here, nothing has changed, okay? It's because you need to press uh, the Calculate LCOE button down here, okay? So if I press here, then what's going to happen here? Uh, there's going to be a new calculation, that, and the, as you can see here, the numbers have slightly changed, okay? Uh, so we changed basically the operations length, okay? Which is now 20 years, and of course, we have a quarterly uh, period length we change a little bit the, the LCOE and of course we increase uh, the discount rate to 5%, okay? So that's the first section of the model. So let's go to the second one now, it's the generation. So basically what we have here, we're gonna have the generation from your renewable asset, okay? It can be either a solar PV, it can be a wind farm, of course, can be any other, any sort of uh, generation you have, okay? And the information you have, we've got to insert in here, okay? So first, the total generation to load, okay? So what is the total amount of, amount of electricity that is going to go from your solar PV directly to the load, okay? Or direct to the grid, okay? So that's the number we're going to plug in here. Then we're going to have the total generation from the renewable and generation assets to the battery, okay? So we're going to distinguish between batteries and load, okay? So we can also put in here. 
and then we're gonna have the total generation from the battery to, to the load okay so basically what you can see what you can see here is that there is a, a loss okay that's in, in uh, the round trip efficiency of the battery okay so the, the, the biggest the number can be here is the same number of the total generation to battery okay but there's going to be always some loss because of the efficiency of the battery and then of course we're going to add some uh generation curtailment here okay that you can calculate then you can just get as a percentage of uh, the total generation okay you can also leave this number to zero okay if there's no curtailment let's say you're gonna you're gonna just offload of the generation not to a particular load behind the meter but you're going to use your your generation to go directly to the grid so there's no curtailment okay so let's assume you're going to do in the second scenario where we have a pv system either uh supplying electricity to the grid or to the battery okay so there's no curtailment in this particular case okay so this is the generation let's going to click again here on the calculation and the number should change here uh, on the on the calculation of the software okay it didn't change basically because the curtailment is not included in the in the numbers in here okay so this is the generation section let's go to the next section which is the the capex okay so what we have here is basically all the capex for the project okay so we have first here the total uh power plant capacity in kilowatts okay so we're assuming here there's a 30,000 kilowatts for this particular let's say solar pv or 30 megawatts we're going to say that uh, the cost per kilowatt hours in usd per kilowatt hour for this particular power plant is one thousand dollars and that now we're going to come to the battery capacity we're going to say we have a 3,000 kilowatts or three megawatts uh, battery okay we're going to say that in our case the battery has an energy size per kilowatt sorry battery energy size in kilowatts per cycle of 9000 kilowatts per cycle so basically what you're saying here is that we can uh, we can discharge the battery in three hours basically okay and then uh, the cost for the batteries in a capacity base is 150 dollars per kilowatt or uh you can also have in energy okay us dollars per kilowatt of 500 dollars okay so this is the capex section Let's go now to the OPEX section, the last section of the LCV calculator, okay? And what we have here is the, just the cost to operate the, the power plant. So we have uh, the power plant OPEX, so we're assuming here is only the renewable asset or the solar PV uh, power plant, okay, which has a 8 uh, USD per kilowatt, hour, per kilowatt per year, okay? Then we have a cost uh, to operate the battery, okay? Again, it's based on capacity, not in energy, okay? So we're assuming a $15, okay? We have a insurance for the power plant, which is half a percent per year on the total uh, power plant capacity. We have a battery insurance here, okay? So distinguish the cost of the insurance from the power plant to the, the battery, okay? So let's say for the battery is 1%. Then we have a land, land lease here, which is a fixed number, okay? $20,000 per year. And then we're going to have here uh, a battery land lease. Okay, so again, we break down the OPEX between the cost of the renewable energy asset and the battery. Okay, so let's going to just change here the numbers just to, so we can see that the change in the in the results here. Let's say it's $10 in here. And let's say for the battery, we're going to pay $12. We're going to say it's 1% insurance for the, for the uh, power plant. And I'm going to say that we're going to pay $15,000 per year for uh for the land lease on the on the renewable asset okay so that's going to calculate here so the number should be calculated okay so the numbers were calculated and they were changing in here so as you can see here we have the results okay so we have basically here what is the blended lcoe okay which means what is the total capex okay of this power plant divided by the total energy delivered to the to the load or to the grid okay being the load being the energy coming from the solar pv or from the battery okay so we have then an lcoe only from the generation asset okay or the solar pv so it's going to be 58 dollars 76 cents and then you have only the lcos or the levelized cost of storage for our battery okay so the the battery cost for the lcos is $117, the LCOE from the solar PV is the $58, and when you combine them together, what you have here is a $74 per megawatt hour, okay? So 
that's what we have in here. You can you have this information in a bar graph here also. And as you scroll down here, you can see the blended LCOE cost structure breakdown. Okay, so you can see how much of uh, the capex of the battery and the uh, and the solar PV plus the opex, how much do they add together to the blended LCOE. Okay, so that's what's being calculated in here. And then you have some few tools here that you can also play around. Okay, so you can you can zoom in and you can zoom out. Okay, you can download as PNG. So there's a few things you can do here. You can resize and you say you can you can play around here and see how it works. If you go down here, what we have basically is a sun key diagram with all the energy flows. Okay, so basically here you can see you can move around things here and we can see the loss. Okay. Uh, we can see how much of the generation goes to the battery and how much goes to the load. And then you can see how much of the energy from the battery goes to the load, okay? And here, uh, we just took that away, but if we have some losses, uh, sorry, if we have some curtailment in the generation, so let's say we're going to have a curtailment here, let's say it's 5,000, okay, per year, okay? That's going to uh, calculate here. So the diagram should be uploaded, okay? So now we can see there's a curtailment also, that goes from the from the generation, and that's added it as a loss to the to the overall uh, LCOE calculation. Okay, and if we scroll down once more here, what we have is just a table with all the results. Okay, so we have here basically the same information as from the Excel files that I prepared in the previous videos. Okay, so we have the start date, the end date, we have the total generation from batteries to PV, generation from PV to load generation from battery to load, okay, so we have the NPVs in here and the totals, okay, then if keep coming down here, we have all the information with all the costs and everything, okay, so you can see what's going on here, and you can move, move to the right side here, and you can see like period by period, and then we can just check to make sure that everything is calculated correct, okay, so we want that the, during operations, we have an yearly, an yearly period, okay, so that we have in here, so as you can see here, it goes from 1st of January to 31st of December. And yeah, if we, if we have like four quarters, okay, we have one, two, three, four quarters as a construction length, and we have a 30, 30 years length here, okay? So if we move down here, we have a 30 years going from 20, uh, let's see here, it goes from 2025 up to 2053, okay? So that's basically uh, how we can uh, access or understand what the LCO of the project is. So let me just going to make one more change here. Let's going to change this to a monthly period. Okay. So let's going to change here. Okay. We're going to recalculate. So this table here should be updated for a monthly period. Uh, okay. So there we go here. So we have now monthly periods during uh, operations. We still have quarterly periods uh, for the construction, okay? That's not very common, but we have the flexibility in the two. And you can see now we have many, many, many more periods because now we have a 30 years project or let's see, it's 30 years project, right? Divided into every, every period, now it's just one month, okay? So let me know what you think about this tool. As I said before, there's a lot more to be added in here and I plan to add more, okay? Um, eventually you can download all the information in Excel, but again, this is just an idea of uh, something that you can use quickly to access your projects, okay? So now that we have gone through all the model and checking all the inputs, I would like to rerun one example with you and call your attention on why when we changed the total generation curtailed in the project, nothing changed with the LCOE or LCOS, okay? So let's gonna uh, analyze. So we're gonna make first a change here. We're gonna change this number here from 3000 to 5000. And we're gonna press calculate. And you see once the calculation is done, which is done already, is that nothing has changed in here, okay? And the reason is because the, LC the curtailed energy is not part of the LCOE calculation. What do I mean by it? Uh, if you look here in the sun key diagram, we can see that the curtailed energy, okay, it's just curtailed, and it's not going to the battery or not to the load, okay? So if you think about what the LCOE is, it's basically all the, the calculation is done by all the energy going uh, to the load, okay? 
and the capex and opex of the project. So when you change the numbers in here, and if we're going to put zero here, essentially you're not changing the capex, you're not changing the opex. Okay, yeah, as you can see here. So you're not changing the capex, you're not changing the opex, and you're still keeping the same generation go in the load. Okay, so essentially nothing is changing in the numbers that is plugged in the LCOE formula. That's the why once you you change the uh, the curtailed energy here, your LCOE doesn't change. But in reality, if you're going to have a curtailed energy here, most likely you're going to have to change your capex because you're going to have a bigger solar PV system, right? So this is more important for behind the system uh, uh, power plants. That's because if they're not able to offload the generation in the grid, they'll have to curtail it anyway, okay? So I think that's clear, and uh, the reason why once you change the curtailed energy here, nothing changes the LCOE, theoretically, but in reality, when, whenever you change the curtailed energy, for sure, you will have to change the capex of your project, particularly the capex of your uh, generation nest, okay? So... That's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video, okay? If you're not able to follow through what the LCOE is or how it is calculated or how to calculate it on uh, an Excel file, please watch the other videos of the series. Thanks very much and stay tuned. Bye.